Keynote 100 uh, trial has been going on for a number of years now. We're presenting the final results. I presented the final results um, at ASCO 2020. So this is a trial of single agent pembrolizumab in 376 patients with recurrent ovarian cancer. Women were divided into two groups, so group A or group B. Group A were patients who were less heavily pretreated. Um, they had to have at least one prior line of treatment and up to three prior lines with a platinum or treatment-free interval of at least three months from their prior treatment and up to 12 months uh, uh, maximum. Um, most of the patients went into cohort A. For cohort B, this was a more heavily pretreated uh, patient population. They had to have re received at least four prior lines of treatment, up to six, um, and again, a platinum-free or treatment-free interval of at least three months from the prior treatment. So they had to have some response or some benefit from their prior therapy, um, but there was no upper limit um, in terms of the pr uh, treatment or platinum-free interval. Um, when patients were first enrolled, especially into cohort A, there was a training set, and that was the first 100 patients that served as a training set for determining uh, PDL1 expression cutoff levels. Um, and the PDL1 expression was measured by the combined positive score, um, which is not just the number of tumor cells uh, or cancer cells that are PDL1 positive, but also macrophages um, and lymphocytes, et cetera. Other other cells within the tumor microenvironment that might be PDL1 positive divided by the number of tumor cells times 100. That served as the CPS uh, score. And the cutoff points were one and then 10. Um, so the overall primary endpoint or main endpoint of the study was RESIST, uh, looking at you know, version 1.1 by cohort. So RESIST uh, response rate, overall response rate by cohort A versus B, and then by PDL1 expression levels as measured by CPS score, which I mentioned before. Um, so what we saw was for, and, and, and all women were, you were enrolled, 376 patients, most of them had uh, high-grade serous, about 75% of patients had high-grade serous carcinomas. Some patients had endometrioid tumor, some low-grade serous, some clear cell. Um, but they were each less than um, significantly less than 10%. Patients had to have an ECOG performance status of zero or one, um, no prior uh, bowel obstruction within you know at least uh, three months prior, um, and mucinous histology was uh, was excluded. Um, and what we found was that for patients in cohort A versus B. You know, there's really no significant difference amongst the response rate. Response rates were around 8 to 8 percent, 8 to 9 percent. And those responses were irrespective of the number of prior lines of, of treatment that the patients received. So if they had received six or they had received one, um, there really was no difference, which is in really in, in contradistinction to patients receiving chemotherapy. So patients receiving chemotherapy or platinum resistant ovarian cancer, as they receive treatment, the response rates lessen with time. Um, and we really did not appear to see that with, uh, with single agent pembrolizumab and Keynote 100. When we looked at the CPS score, um, so patients who had a CPS score of 10 or higher tended to have increased response rates. And we saw a response rate that actually approached around 18% um, for patients who had a combined score of 10 or higher. So CPS score um, appeared to have a, you know, predictive a, prediction, a prediction for res increased response rate and clear cell histology um, also seemed to have a, uh, a, was a predictor for higher response rate. And that's been seen in other single agent um, IO trials as well. With regards to toxicities, um, both just overall toxicities as well as immune-related toxicities, um, there were no differences in toxicities versus other single-agent uh, pembrolizumab trials. So most of the toxicities were grade one or two and were, were fatigue, some nausea, uh, diarrhea, et cetera. For immune-related toxicities, um, the, the most common were related to the thyroid gland, either hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Most of these were grade one or two. 
Other toxicities we're seeing, such as colitis, um, there were some grade three or higher toxicities here. Um, and we also saw skin toxicities. One patient developed Stevens-Johnson syndrome and actually had a grade five toxicity. Um, the other grade five toxicity out of 100, or out of 376 patients was hypoaldosteronism. So there were two deaths related to, uh, to treatment. Um, but, but overall, uh, you know, aside from those two patients, most of the toxicities were, you know, grade one or two. And again, as I mentioned, not dissimilar to, um, to other single agent pembrolizumab trials. So I think overall, what we've seen here is, you know, response rate of, you know, a little below 10% um, and not dissimilar to other single agent immunotherapy trials for patients with recurrent ovarian cancer. Um, those response rates were higher in patients whose tumors were, you know, significantly pd one positive, so had a combined positive score of 10 or higher, where the response rates were around 18%. And the responses were, were seen, you know, regardless of how heavily the pre patient was pretreated, um, and also, uh, you know, regardless of the level of platinum sensitivity, so it didn't seem to matter if the patient had platinum refractory or platinum resistant um, cancer, even platinum sensitive cancer. So, so those were the overall kind of high level results of the final results of Keynote 100.